Welcome back to part 3 of our tutorial series, The Art of Furnace Operation. My name is Marcus Wevel and I am Director of Emission and Engineering. Today we talk about ethylene cracking furnaces in the petrochemical part of oil refineries. An important limiting factor for more benefits in ethylene cracking furnaces is the running length before it must be decoked. You have such a bottleneck? We can help you extending your running time. Just follow this tutorial. High coil temperatures, often referred to as hotspots, are normally the parameters that triggers feed cuts, lowering of the feed outlet temperatures, or the necessity for decoking. But what actually causes high coil temperatures? Normally it is caused by internal coking of the feed, leading to lower heat transfer rates in the rate related coils. Internal coking is depending on the following parameters. 1. Feed properties such as temperature, composition, tendency for coke formation, etc. And 2. Feed coil distribution, quality and the resulting residence time of the feed inside the coils. And 3. Excessive heat transfer from the combustion chamber to the coils. The first parameter is typically nothing that you want to worry in order to extend the running time of a furnace. Also, some furnace configurations seem to promote better ethylene or propylene yield with naphtha, ethane, propane, HVGO or whatever feed is used. The second parameter is usually also given for a certain coil arrangement and cannot be changed easily, at least not while the furnace is running. That brings it quickly to the third parameter, which is the most tricky one to avoid. Certainly, heat transfer depends on the operating temperature, emissivity of the materials used and geometry of the coils and the combustion chamber. Again, also here there are two things one can't really influence while running, which is the emissivity and geometry. That leaves the operating temperature as the main parameter to work on. Now the question is, what does operating temperature actually means? Normally it is referred to as the flue gas temperature at the end of the radiant section, for ethylene cracking furnaces often as high as 1150 degrees C or even above. For a given fuel fed to the burners, the adiabatic flame temperature of, for example, pure methane at stoichiometric conditions is approximately 2000 degrees C. Not surprising, but often very underestimated, is how the excess air changes that temperature. If it would be possible to adjust the excess air in all burners the same way, theoretically all burners would produce flue gas with the same temperature, which would leave heat transfer or the creation of hotspots only to the geometry and the radiation inside the combustion chamber. And here is where often the error of reasoning occurs. Operators tend to believe that excess air is the same on all burners, although trying hard to achieve that, it is very difficult to achieve, because for the large amount of burners in an ethylene furnace, there is often only one, two or maybe three oxygen analyzers that measures the excess air via the oxygen. But every burner has an air damper that needs to be adjusted precisely. Without knowing or measuring the airflow to each burner, it is simply not possible to set to fuel ratio in the same way in all burners, because that is what's needed in order to achieve the same flue gas temperature on each burner. Coming back to the same chart as before, one can see that small differences of excess air has considerable impact on the temperature. In the example, a burner at stoichiometric conditions compared to one with 30% of excess air has already approximately 360 degrees higher temperature. Keep in mind, heat transfer by radiation goes up by the power of 4, and this is exactly why the majority of hotspots are caused on the coils. You think a 30% difference in excess air from one burner to another is exaggerated? and very uncommon. Problem is, almost nobody literally measures it and therefore can't really tell. We have measured it in several furnaces 
and found deviation even more severe than 30%. Here are some results. Example 1 is a furnace with 16 floor and 20 wall burners, all diffusion type natural draft. The deviation from the average at the fuel ratio of the hearth burners show quite significant deviations up to a maximum of 35%. Similar for the wall burners. In the second example, we measured air distribution and calculated air to fuel ratios from there. The flow burners revealed a deviation up to 22%. The wall burners were self priming premix burners and there it was not possible to measure the air distribution. Now, in order to set the air correctly on all burners, you need to know the heat release on each burner. For furnaces with only floor burners and a single control valve for fuel gas, it is more simple than if you have floor and wall burners and several fuel gas control valves for sections of the heater. If this occurs, air dampers must be set either by DCS with automated control loops or as most of the time there are no automatic burner air dampers, the field operator has to set them manually and this is extremely difficult, if not impossible, because visible flame appearance is the only criteria left over. In most ethylene cracking furnaces, the combustion chamber has 1150 degrees C and higher, so no chance to distinguish flame pattern from one burner to another. This is why the operator needs a measurable parameter, which is the airflow through each burner measured via the airside pressure drop. Like this, even on a setup of a furnace as shown here, the half burners can be operated at for example 10% excess air, even without a specific O2 measurement that captured the O2 in the flue gas from the half burners only. Even so, if the burners in section 1 are on lower heat release than those in section 2, 3 or 4. Other approaches of setting the air on the hearth burners, for example laser-based O2 and or CO measurements require two or even more levels of laser grids to really determine the effects of each individual burner. In practice, this is very costly to install and maintain and cannot accommodate easy changes in the furnace draft or wind conditions in the burner air inlets. Furthermore, the coils inside the combustion chamber may twist and move over time and can so forth block the passage for the laser beams. You are interested in extending your decoking cycles? We know how to do that. Contact us. Emission Engineering. We engineer your emissions.